Janine, how are you? Hey, Hitesh. I'm doing great. Yeah, I heard you watch some of my videos as well. I do. I love them. They're very informative. Thank and I think so it's much. even more interesting to see what your viewers say. I like to watch what the comments are. Oh, that's really nice. Good to know that their <laughs> feedback is directly reaching to yes, Janine. Yes, and I immediately start contacting my team. <laughs> <laughs> That's really nice that the impact is directly going there. Yeah. Right. I would love to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, great event and thank you so much for inviting me here. Uh, the first question, everybody is talking about AI. I really like AI. There's a little bit of people are afraid of AI as well. But I see that this is going to totally change how developers develop their product and are yeah. going to ship their product as well. Yeah. So what advice you can give them that, hey, how do you see the AI evolving? and is it going to increase the shipment of the products? How do you see AI evolving in the next couple of years or something? Yeah, no, I love this question, Hitesh. And thank you for being here. It's, it makes everything so special when we can bring everybody together. You know, you're right. We're all top, what's top of mind is AI and the subject of how AI is transforming entire software development lifecycle is something that we are very much thinking about closely at Google. Uh, my team and I have, as we talk to lots of developers, it reminds me of how not that long ago, you really think of AI as something that's for scientists only. It's only for people with access to specific special machine and hardware, and you had to be like in a research program. And it was all about how do I get lots of data? How do I then train a model and deploy my model? That's super important. But now what we're seeing more than ever is AI is accessible to everyone. And what that means is it's causing a shift in what developers do and is making all developers turn into and have to become AI developers. And so what does that mean? Well, it's twofold. On one hand, it's about what developers are building and it's changing the concepts and the knowledge they need in order to build new, interesting things with AI models. And that's why at Google, we are really trying to push the frontier of what models can do and making those models broadly available to developers. Uh, just here, we announced that Gemini 1.5 Pro uh, is now uh, our long context window that we announced a few months ago at Google I.O. Uh, with 2 million tokens. Well, it's broadly available in Gemini 1.5 Pro for developers. It's too much tokens. <laughs> it can never be too much. <laughs> but, but seriously, what's interesting about that is, you, well, for example, you can take an entire repository or a entire set of library of images, you can bring that into a multimodal model like Gemini with 1.5 Pro with the 2 million token context window and give it the context to help you create something really immersive, really interesting that combines video, audio, and text, right? And so we think that that is empowering developers to build new things, what they build. But the second thing I said is two. The second thing is, is changing how developers build. And so when we think about the traditional software development lifecycle, that we know as developers, you plan, you build, you uh, test your code locally, then you check it in, you push it through CI CD, eventually you deploy, and you monitor. Well, guess what? That's still critical to build a production grade, scalable you know, application. You want millions of users, you still need to do that. But what you also need to do with AI is you need to be able to incorporate additional components and technologies. So for example, if I want to ground my model and fine tune it into uh, with context that makes sense for the use case, whether it's a specific language or a specific uh, you know, catalog of shoes uh, and products for my commerce shop, well, guess what? I need to do retrieval augmented generation or RAG and being able to bring that into my model. Another example of new technology and new concepts is prompting, right? Yeah. Developers weren't prompting before, and now we have a whole new industry of prompt engineering. And so that's just a couple, that's scratching the surface of the things that developers now need to also add into software development. And so at Google, we think that's an amazing opportunity, but it's also challenging. And therefore, we're spending a lot of time trying to make sure we're providing training. Uh, you know, for example, we've done our Build with AI global event series. Uh, we've been able here in India alone 
train over 25,000 uh, Indian developers. And then also we are, you know, making sure that uh, we're making our products work even better together so that you have the entire tool chain, it's more integrated and seamless. I think this is going to contribute in the open source projects as well because the longer the context window size is, you can just add the entire repository and can ask questions that how to understand this open source project, which is like gazillion big. Exactly, exactly. And it's open source projects. And for example, uh, today we announced only here Project Oscar. Yeah. Uh, and Project Oscar is really cool because it's a reference for developers to be able to build AI agents that help them with their maintenance of their open source projects. But if you think about it, um, today we shared that we're starting with our Go project, which is, has like thousands of commits, 93,000 or something, and we have like 2,000 contributors. And it's a lot of tasks that you have to do when you're managing an open source project. But if you think about it, you can actually take that further. You could imagine AI agents that are helping you to maintain all kinds of different open source projects, but not just open source, even closed source, right? As a company, you have your code base with your, that, uh, for your software that you're building. Imagine you can bring AI agents in that help you with unit, generating unit tests, that help you with code review workflows that your people are doing. So we think that there's so many possibilities. Of course, and I uh, the moment you announced the Oscar, I realized that I do have a Golang series on my YouTube channel. I need to update that now there you with a more context. Uh, another another question I would like to uh, fire up is, India is a very unique country in its own, its own. And what it needs is the volume is really high here, but also the market is price sensitive. So developers want to build crazy good products. And for mm -hmm. that, they are worried on one hand about the volume of it. On the one hand, they are worried about the pricing of it. Mm -hmm. So what Google Cloud is offering more so that developers can freely build, test their products. And you know, it's a price sensitive market, but it's on the same time, it's a volume game also in India. Yeah. So what yeah. the Google Cloud is doing so that it supports and helps more developers build freely, fastly, and for the scale. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love this question and it's true. Like just uh, yesterday, I was with a group of about 14 developers and startup founders as part of what we call our Google Developer Advisory Board. And we get together with this board to give us feedback on the things that we're building, but also tell us what they need help with and what we can do to make their lives easier. You know what the number one thing is? Exactly what you said, the price sensitivity, the cost of being able to use all of this technology. So my advice would be number one, join the Google Developer Program. The Google Developer Program is at google.dev and essentially what that does is it gives you access to tons of resources and it's no cost. So for example, you can get the Google Cloud Skills Boost uh, learning credits so that you can have access to the entire library of courses available in the Google Cloud Skills Boost. And you can learn not only the kind of foundational infrastructure based courses, but also all of the things we're doing with generative AI on the cloud. Uh, and with Vertex and being able to get access to Gemini as well as open models and being able to learn how do you then deploy that? How do you build agents on the cloud? And so that's a great opportunity for Indian developers to take advantage of. I would say a second thing as part of the Google Developer Program is that we're providing free credits for Google Cloud resources. So as you're experimenting and you want to try things out and deploy them, you don't want to have to worry about what is this going to cost, right? If you don't even know if it works yet. And so that's what we've been having in mind based on the feedback we've gotten from developers. And so we're keeping our eye on it, continue to add more into those credits. For example, uh, just introduce uh, credits, more credits for Ver with Vertex as well. The third thing that I would say is, you know, certainly, you know, developers, they have their favorite IDEs, they have their favorite tools that they like to use. But what we also hear a lot is, I need some defaults to make some of this easier. Yes. How do you integrate more of this? What's the guidance you can give me? People love opinions what, stuff. Yeah, give me opinions. Give me opinions, right? And so that's something that Google, we've really thought a lot about. And so we're not only creating more documentation, which is super important, providing quality documentation through our developer relations team, but we are investing in the tools being more connected as well as well, what we call well-lit paths. So, okay, here's a solution template. This template, it has Firebase Jenkins. It has a way, 
uh, to help me learn how to build an AI agent with GenKit and orchestrate my access to models and tools and vector uh, data stores. Oh, wait a minute, this solution template, it also shows me how to build with Flutter and how to deploy my application, which is great looking by the way, on all of these different platforms. And let's not forget, oh, Firebase Data Connect, which gives you ability to use GraphQL uh, to, to drive your data connection into C Cloud SQL databases. Well, now this is all part of an integrated framework that we call solutions. And by the way, we just introduced 14 new solutions in oh. Project IDX today, oh, nice. including a featured solution that we call Compass, which Compass is something that we've shown how to do exactly what I just said. It's open source. All of the working code is available. And then we're, it's a, the app is based on a travel itinerary concept, but you can apply that to many other things. Oh, nice. Uh, one final question I would like to fire up is, see, AI is now an integral part of everyday life. I use it a lot, especially the new update in the Google Sheets, mm -hmm. uh, the planners and update. Now, all of my YouTube uh, content creation process is in that only. Yeah. So what's your favorite AI thing that, hey, this is my de facto now. I cannot live without it. Is there anything? Okay, so you have to check out the gems that are now available that we released not that long ago in Gemini. Have you seen it? Not yet. Google Gems? Well, guess what? With Gems, so if you think about it, you use Gemini, uh, gemini.google.com, and you put in your prompt and you get help from Gemini for, you know, set of creating a lesson plan for education or a to-do list for your household. Well, now with Gems, you can actually create more tailored, smaller Gemini, access to Gemini to do specific tasks and to help you with very specific things that you want to do. So, you know, I like to use gems uh, to come up with, you know, hey, I want like some coaching on, you know, how I can make a great meal because, you know, I'm not a great cook normally, <laughs> but okay, you can give me recipes. You can kind of help me, you know, prepare a great meal. I'll have a happy family at home. That's a really gentle advice. I'm pretty sure now people will start to use it. <laughs> It was a kind of a hidden feature, but now it's out public. It's so out there. It's out there now. Now everybody will be using. So that's all for uh, this one I had in mind. Great conversation with you. I'm pretty sure people will enjoy this conversation, will learn something about it. And if they have any question, the comment section is open. And now that everybody knows exactly. that she's reading all the comments. I'm reading the comments. <laughs> so go in the comment section. Any feedback, any advice that you have, just let us know in the comment section. And thanks to all of your viewers. Thank you as well for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Nice catching up with you.